So Belgian Gulch is, is moving, changing from this, and he's changing to a six inch batch. And so here he is demoing this old J. You can see that cob cover around the barrel and starting to take apart the core. And I'm assuming you're just going to fill this in and build the batch on top of it. That's what it looked like from your photos. But here's that core coming apart. You can see the fly ash hanging inside and uh, and that his core is still in really good shape and I believe you've had this for a few years now I think you told me it kinda eroded here and you had to catch it and patch it um, but it looks good so and Belgian Gulch says yes the uh, cob surround around the barrel worked perfect so that's great that's something that everyone should keep in mind if you're building a stove and you have a large rating surface you can adjust how fast that puts heat into your space by covering some of that metal um, with cob. So a little more deconstruction photos getting into that J. Here's the old riser. Now this is my seven years he burned this. So here's my original riser um, technique. This is using a grease drum, a 17 gallon grease drum with a clay and perlite inner uh, liner that was originally poured around a, a standard flue pipe that then m burns out of there, your first few burns. So well, I loved seeing this Belgian Gulch because I have <laughs> two or three of these that look just like that sitting down in my shop. And uh, and they're perfect. And they're I can use them over and over again. And the one in my house is still in there after, what's it been now, nine years, I think. So... Um, so, and you wrapped fiberglass around the barrel. Oh, the outer barrel, I'm assuming. Now, Belgian Gulch is talking about the, I'm assuming he's talking about the outer barrel, um, fiberglass in the cob, just the cloth to be the fiber within that cob to hold it around that outer barrel and keep it from cracking off of there, which those fibers make a big difference. So, so anyways, speaking about risers, this is still a really viable way to build a riser. I do think the five minute riser is obviously superior, um, but this is an absolutely uh, wonderful way to build one if you're trying to just get by with mostly found materials. You'd still have to buy perlite, um, but there are some things you could use. You could use rice husks or holes um, or things like that to try and achieve the same, the same insulative outer. So there's that. So And then we start in on the new build. And this is really cool to see, Belgian Gulch. And again, I would like you to... Uh, Point to you, point your friend uh, Tall Shadow to this. <laughs> so Tall Shadow, when you keep asking, kept asking me about building, you know, your cores with the fire brick splits and things like that. This is really what we want to see, right? We want to see that core, the insulative inner layer, backed by a firm outer construction with support all the way out to it. So, um, gold stars all around here, Belgian Gulch. This looks awesome. Um, now, Belgian Gulch is using insulative fire bricks for the inner, but his insulative fire bricks are fairly dense, so they don't really suffer from much abrasion. There's not much concern here about abrasion resistance. If you were using something really soft for your insulative layer, like ceramic fiberboard, you could do this same construction flipped around. And I would put those heavy fire bricks on the inside. I might not, but you would. In other words, some people, you know, really get concerned about the abrasion wear inside the firebox. And if that's the case, I think it's just fine to do heavy fire brick inside, insulated fire brick outside. In that case, I would prefer to see split fire brick on the inside so that the high, there's not as much mass inside the firebox. But there's a couple different ways you could, you could approach this, depending on your goals, depending on your use, depending on who's using it, and all those things. So this is a really, 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 really great example of a build. And Tall Shadow, man, like Tall, or Tall Shadow, Belgian Gulch, like Tall Shadow says, gold stars all around on this one. This is one that I think anyone here who hasn't started a build yet can take uh, some really good notes from just 
mainly that concept of an insulated core surrounded by a firm shell, high mass shell. Um, so, you know, that, that will take you a long ways. That insulated core, you know, it could be just those insulated fire bricks, then it could be all cob and this thing could look like a big worm. Um, but it would achieve the same thing. All that cob around the outside would hold that insulative inter inner layer stable. The insulative inner layer would allow for the properties we require inside the combustion area. Um, so, there's that. Um, uh, that is so cool to see. I love that, Belgian Gulch. It's really great. Um, He's got a secondary air piece going in on the bottom there. You can see he's got a spot for it laid in, cut in there, ports coming together. And then his six minute riser that we talked about in um, a previous chat there, laid behind it, interfacing with the port. And here's how it's gonna start to come together here. So as you can see, these builds can be really quite simple. Um, you know, as, as we've gone farther along on this path, we've gotten to a point where we're starting to come up with some techniques and materials and practices that allow one to stack these things together pretty, pretty simply with pretty basic materials easily available. And uh, I'm just, I'm thrilled to see this. This is, you know, I think just about anyone could approach a build like this with these simple modules, as it were, um, and and have great success and have an unbelievable uh, stove. So um, Belgian Gulch cut to size secondary air, exactly right. So that's the right thing to do. You lay that secondary air in there first, leave it extra long, just like he's got here, sticking out the uh, off the edge, and then proceed with your build. Finish your build, place your door, and then cut your secondary air to size because the distances here are going to change depending on all of the mortar used, door used, skin techniques, all of those things. We've seen these. These were Belgian Gulch's work up until up to up to last week's chat. One of his wonderful doors. Just beautiful. Love those doors, Belgian Gulch. So if you guys don't aren't aware last week I think we talked about a little bit but Belgian Gulch has been working on this door design as well as his secondary air tubes and he's going to be making those available to you guys to anyone for sale um, to be partnered with the plan sets so if you're building one of my stoves you can purchase I already have piece lid doors but these doors are going to be a much better fit in terms of custom designed just for these stoves and they do have that safe super safe secondary air or primary air inlet as well um, so I think these are the premium option for doors uh, to be honest and I'm really excited that we're finally starting to get something out there Belgian Gulf so thank you for making that available so I think we're just about gonna be caught up here with where we were last week so here's the beginning of the new parts of the build I think Belgian Gulch we can see his six minute riser being coupled to the top of the, uh, or, or being coupled in there with the rest of the core. He's, looks like he's um, kind of captured it with some ceramic fiberboard and just basically infilled with cob, which I think is a, is a great way to go. That's really all you need to do. Once it's in place, you can kind of just fill that gap up and uh, that seals all your joints and then you're ready to go. Now here he's got the top just sitting on there <laughs> it is the premium option door there, Tall Shadow, I think. I, you know, look at how nice that thing is. This is a great photo to, uh, to, as, to show that off. I mean, that thing is sweet. So there's that. Um, front view of the door. Beautiful. And here we see the stove starting to come together. Now, keep in mind that uh, he's building this on the, on, the, on the dead carcass of his old stove. So what you see down below this is really just a plinth. It's just a platform for this to sit on. Um, so there's, you know, just a lot of space below. Um, but this is the stove basically up here, I believe. Do I have that correct, Belgian Gulch? You didn't plumb anything down into this 
there's no hollow space down below that's that's acting as bell i don't think so there we are ceramic fiber board for the top of the firebox super simple build right it looks great here it is in the space and i believe you told us last time this is the studio oh that's right there is a bench i'm sorry there's a bench going off the uh the far side back there that we can't see um i was incorrect it does get plumbed down low so it, the exhaust does drop out of this bell area it does go down this lower plinth but i think it just goes that way behind the bench there is nothing in this area here this is just the platform underneath the core but back behind there as i think we'll see in the next pictures it does drop down here and head out this way into the seating area into the heated bench so there's the bench here's the exhaust and belgian goats you i believe that you told me you had essentially no issues starting this thing up from cold even. Um, I think you probably picked your time, I'm guessing, your your startup time um, carefully so that you had good temperature, good cold temperature outside and, uh, and maybe it was warm inside. Um, <clears throat> but I'm wondering, I think once it's warm, I can't imagine you'll ever have an issue with startup. But the reason I ask is because you do, you're, you're asking the gases to drop down into that cold bench, but then find that chimney again. And sometimes that can be difficult if you don't have draft primed already. And since your barrel is a little ways away from your chimney, it doesn't look like you have too much access to a bypass. Have you, has that been an issue for you or has it just been a non-issue? Sometimes it's just a non-issue due to the nature of the area and the way you built it and everything else. Sometimes it's a good idea to have a tee there to put a piece of paper in to help prime the chimney or something like that. Um, do you have any uh, input there, Belgian Gulch? Wow, look at, look at her ripping in terms, of, uh, in terms of whether you feel like you could use, you know, are you okay without a bypass? Is it ever an issue? If it is an issue, how do you deal with it? This is a cool photo. I love the tiles on the side. I'm assuming you just uh, tapped those on there with some clay sand mortar. And Belgian Gulch says not yet. And I'm assuming you mean not yet. You haven't had any draft issues. So that's great. And you might not. You know, I mean, like I said, if, if the design's solid, a lot of time, um, yeah, easy starter once the bench warms. Exactly. And if you're the kind of guy like I am who gets my bench warm basically once a winter and then it never cools off, you never have draft issues. Um, so... Uh, that's that's a great answer. Sometimes it's darkest just before the dawn, and by that I mean the hardest, you know, the time when draft issues manifest the worst is right after you built it. And that's pretty much always true because they're wet inside and you're excited to burn it. It's usually off season, so it's warm outside. You don't have as much delta T, and uh, and that that can be the hardest times. So, so in other words, if you can get it lit the first time, you're usually going to be just fine. So. So there's that. Um, so love it, Belgian Gulch. It's, I think it's gorgeous. I think it's, I think it's so functional, so simple. And